Hi, this is Aaron Hayes with Team Benelli. Today I'm out at Texas Shooting Academy with Pew Pew Tactical, and I'm gonna give you five tips to take your shotgun game to the next level. So tip number one is know your pattern. A lot of people uh, in three gun and IPSC style matches just throw in, say, a light mod choke in their gun and just roll with it for the whole year without ever changing it. And that's fine, that can get you through. But if you're looking to maximize your performance, you really need to A, know what your pattern is doing and how different chokes affect it, and B, know when and where to use it. So the thing that I do at the beginning of every season, especially if I have a new gun or a new brand of chokes, is I go out on a big steel plate, I paint it, and I shoot it at various distances with all of my chokes. You can do three yard increments, five yard increments, whatever it is you choose, it's really just up to you and how precise you wanna be. I particularly do three yard increments, that way I know, you know, any target I come across, I know what my pattern's gonna be doing at that distance. So, shoot target, measure your pattern, write it down, and, and rinse and repeat for every choke at every distance. You can have your choke uh, pattern on your phone, on your stock, wherever you wanna store it, just make sure it's handy. That way you can refer to it and say, okay, this target is 17 yards away, it's a 12 inch target, I want this much pattern on it. This can be really important in some matches where we've got really heavy poppers. Not all match directors are super awesome at calibrating their poppers all the time. So uh, there was a match I shot a couple years ago where we came to a stage that had a 36 yard popper that everyone knew wasn't falling and no one could get it to fall. Well, no one knew what choke to use. Uh, I put in my far choke. Uh, I use, the far is, is an approximation for a, a mod choke and the brand of chokes I use, which is Muller. Uh, put in my far choke, put in my 1300 FPS shells, and boom, popper was down, no problem. So it's it's a small thing to know, it seems like sometimes, but can be very, very important uh, in knocking down targets on the first shot. Another area where it's very important to know your pattern is an IPSC style competition uh, where we have a lot of steel no shoots, right? So you'll have a shoot target here, you'll have a no shoot target right here. If you knock down the no shoot target, that's a huge penalty. So you've got to be able to hit a knockdown target without hitting the penalty target. And knowing the width of your pattern at various distances is really important uh, to doing well on stages like that. There are several, uh, several different brands of extended chokes you can use. Briley is one real popular. Pure Gold makes good chokes. Uh, I use a brand called Muller. They're kind of focused on the sporting clays market, but they do have a three gun line. I'll pop this out and show you. Uh, they have some different names for their chokes. This one's called a FAR, which like I said is is approximately to a mod in most other uh, companies. But you can get on their websites and look at the restriction. Pretty much every choke company measures chokes in uh, restriction, which means how much does it restrict the bore over what's called cylinder, which is just a straight bore of the barrel. So I think this far is like a 20,000 constriction. I'm not actually sure. It's not marked on here. You have to get on their website and find out what it is. But, but yeah, every gun shoots a little bit different. Every type of ammo shoots a little bit different. So you definitely in order to maximize your, your use of different chokes, uh, test it with your gun and your ammo because something I tell you for my gun and chokes and ammo may not mean the same thing at all for your chokes and gun and ammo. This is a, a topic that we could spend hours and hours talking about. So if you have more, more, uh, more questions, we can definitely get into it. But this is kind of a brief overview of what you need to do to get the most out of your chokes. Tip number two for taking your competition shotgun game to the next level, count your rounds. Some three gun stages in particular can have round counts upwards of 50 rounds. That is a lot of targets and a lot of rounds to keep track of. Of course, keeping the gun loaded is really important. So knowing how many rounds you've shot and how many rounds are left in your gun is really important. When I first started shooting, I tried to count every shot, have my entire stage plan in my mind and all the numbers at the same time. That's just not practical, at least for my brain. So what I do, is I count to eight and then I reload. My gun holds nine shells. So I know when I've shot eight times, I have to reload. Uh, I have my loading plan. I break it up into stages. So, okay, between here and this tree, I have to shoot this number of targets. You know, that varies per stage. But basically I know that when I shoot eight, I have to load. And that helps me to not focus on the overall round count on the stage. It kind of keeps it a little simpler and a little more compact and helps me focus on shooting the stage. Well, of course, what if I miss, right? I need to be able to shoot extra rounds, load extra rounds if I miss targets. I used to try to count my misses for the whole stage. It's disastrous. So what I do is I count to eight when I'm shooting, and if I miss twice, I load two shells. And what that does is it gets me back on my plan as if I never missed. A lot of times you can have this great, complex, elaborate plan to do really well on a stage, and if you miss one or two shots, the whole thing is out the window. I mean, that can really lead to disaster really, really quick. So it's really important to have a method 
to get back on your plan without having to stop and think about where you are in the stage, where you are in your plan, and what you've done wrong. And I find that the, uh, the count eight and count two method really works well for me. Um, obviously, there's other ways of doing it. There's a lot of shooters better than me, a lot of people smarter than me. But this is what works for me, is count to eight and then load. If I miss twice, put two back in, I'm right back on track. Tip number three on taking your shotgun game to the next level is make sure your shotgun fits. I know this seems like a simple thing, but it's hugely important, particularly if you are you know, taller than average, shorter than average, um, or particularly like female and junior shooters have a real hard time sometimes getting a full-size shotgun to fit. Well, it doesn't have to be full-size. Most people don't know that most modern shotguns are adjustable both in length of pull, which is, which is essentially the length of the stock behind the trigger, and in what's called uh, drop and cast. So this is a Benelli M2, for example. It has plates right here between the receiver and the stock that you can adjust to move the stock up, down, left, or right, depending on obviously where you need it to be. You can also get a compact stock that's about three quarters of an inch, I believe, shorter than the standard one. You can also get a shorter or longer butt pad. If you need it, you can get a higher cheek riser if you need it. And <clears throat> when we get into tip number four, you'll realize why that's so important. Uh, and it doesn't take much of a fitment, of a misfitment on a shotgun to really make a, dif a difference in how well you shoot it. So, you know, if you're taking measurements or, or trying to decide if a shotgun fits you or not, do not discount, you know, an eighth or a quarter of an inch of difference in maybe where it should be in a perfect world because that's enough to make a difference. Uh, most modern shotguns are adjustable. Like I said, with the, with the shim plate systems that they have and then the various uh, butt pads and cheek pads. So check the user manual that came with your gun to find out if your specific model uh, is adjustable and how to, to accomplish that because it can vary a little bit depending on what brand of shotgun you have. But definitely take the time to get your shotgun set up to fit you because uh, it's crucial for maximizing your performance and comfort and frankly, uh, recoil management. If a shotgun doesn't fit, you're really gonna feel it at the end of the day. I've got these guns set up pretty well for me. I can come out and shoot two cases of shells in a day and not have any soreness or fatigue or anything because my gun fits. It's really important and it's an often overlooked step. So I hope this helps get your shotgun fit the way it should. Tip number four for taking your competition shotgun game to the next level, focus on your first shot. When I first started shooting, I really didn't have great stage plans and I really didn't have great discipline in terms of routine, starting a stage the same way each time. And I was missing my first shot all the time, having bad stages and just really wasn't enjoying myself. And talking to somebody who I consider a mentor and coach, and I said, hey, I'm really struggling with this and I can't figure out why. why. Like, why am I immediately off target? Why am I immediately off my plan? And he said, well, what are you looking at? And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, before the, before the beat, before your first shot, what are you looking at? Oh, I didn't even know. I was looking at all kinds of random things. I was not focused on my first shot. He told me, look at your target, focus on hitting that first shot. That should be the only thing that's in your mind. And I said, okay, I'll try it. And lo and behold, it worked. So particularly with shotgun shooting, three gun and IPSC style competition shotgun shooting, staying on your round count is really important. Uh, these guns are hard to load and takes a lot of extra time if you have to shoot extra shots. So maximizing your shots and hitting every shot if possible, uh, it's easier said than done, <laughs> but hitting as many shots as you can is really important to success. If you miss your first shot, you're immediately off your plan, both your stage plan and your loading plan. And it's real easy for the wheels to come off. So I have a couple of drills that I run to focus on hitting my first shot. Uh, the first one is just more of a mental drill and it's just look at the target. I make sure I start with my eyes and my body and my gun in the same position every time. Uh, for me, I got a chamber flag in this gun, it's clear. So I'm gonna demonstrate this. Go to my hip, my hand's where I need to be. I put the tip of my barrel, or in the case of a gun like this with a long mag magazine tube, the tip of the tube right over my first target. So if I was gonna shoot at say that round right there, I put my, my muzzle right over that. So my eyes are looking at my muzzle and my target, and that way on the beep, I'm already where I need to be, visually, on the target and the end of the gun. All I have to do is bring the gun to my shoulder and pull the trigger. It works really well for me. I'm sure there's some other methods to doing that, but that's what I've found works the best for me. 
Uh, it helps me to stay focused on hitting my first shot. It helps me to stay focused on my subsequent shots. And it really helps me to stay on plan. Um, and kind of related to that is, is the shot before and after a reload. So whenever I'm reloading a shotgun, I really focus on making a good shot right before I come down for my reload because it's real easy to just start thinking about your reload, come off your shoulder, make a bad shot. Uh, all the things that I just said about your first shot of the stage also apply to your first shot after a reload. It's very important to get your eyes and your muzzle back on target, make sure the gun is tucked into your shoulder, make sure you have a good mount uh, and, and hit that shot. So the first major aspect of hitting your first shot is eyes on target, eyes on the muzzle. The second major aspect of hitting your first shot is to make sure your gun is mounted solidly. A lot of people, when they hear that beep, they get the gun on their shoulder as fast as they can and get a real terrible mount. Or in the case of today, we're in Texas, it's 33 degrees for some reason. I have this huge jacket on. It'd be real hard for me to get my normal mount wearing this jacket because I'm just not used to it. You can, you can catch it in your shoulder, kind of your armpit here, you can catch excess material. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. Well, most people just discount that entirely or don't think about it at all. So whenever you're making that first shot, really focus on getting that gun nice and high and tight on your shoulder, get your cheek mounted, make a good shot. It's real, real easy to not pay attention to that and get off plan disastrously. I hope this helps you hit that first shot and every other shot in your stages. Tip number five for taking your competition shotgun game to the next level, less is more. I know a lot of us don't want to hear this, particularly when it comes to equipment, because who doesn't love buying all the new gadgets, all the new stuff? That's the whole reason we're here, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that as fun and exciting as that can be, it's not always great for performance in a match. A lot of people watch top shooters, right? Just like you top athletes wear this shoe. Top drivers use this tire. Top shooters use this gun or this gear. Well, it's important to pay attention to what they're using, but it's also important to understand why. And I'll give you a great example. I'm a left-handed shooter. So some of the things that I do with my guns and gear are vastly different than the majority, the vast majority of competition shooters. Well, what if Jerry Michelik was left-handed and you didn't know it? right and you oh jerry uses this or daniel horner uses this or any of these top shooters use this stuff and you just go out and do it without understanding why they do it you might be going backwards so i'm not saying the latest and greatest gear isn't fun and awesome and effective but it's important to understand why the top pros or whoever it is you're using as your model whether it's whether it's people in a tactical class or uh, you know competition shooters or any other discipline it's important to understand why the people at the top are doing what they do um, and what's right for them may not be right for you. I can't shoot as fast as some of these top guys, so some of the things they do for their gear to enable them to shoot really, really fast are gonna do me no good and may in fact hurt my performance. So it's really important to evaluate what you wanna do in terms of piece of gun or gear upgrade and why and how that's gonna affect your game specifically. Uh, and this applies not just to you know competition shotguns, but competition as a whole, home defense, EDC, uh, you know, so many aspects of firearms and the, the guns and gear aspect of it. Uh, you can really go overboard on the gear side of it without really accomplishing anything or improving your skills. Uh, we see a lot of people that come into three gun with very tactical rifles, right? All kinds of things on all sides of the handguard and illuminators and all this stuff that's really cool and fun to play with, but really doesn't help their match performance. And they usually don't realize it until they go use a VTAC barricade. We use what's called a VTAC barricade in competition a lot. It's a piece of plywood. It's got various shaped cutouts, angles, squares, circles, triangles, just to make shooting positions harder. Well, a big handguard with rails and all kinds of stuff hanging off of it does not fit in the slots of a VTAC barricade very well. I've seen guys not be able to get their barrel through. I've seen guys get their barrel and handguard stuck and not be able to get it back out of the barricade. Uh, so that's kind of a, a good example of when people realize they have too much stuff. There are other examples that are kind of more situation specific, but yeah, when it comes to gear, less is usually more. I hope this helps you up your game. If you have more questions, just let us know in the comments below.